I'm Matt Marco. This is Nork Discussions, and we have Lynn Getz, the Republican Party's 2020 nominee for Oakland County Prosecutor. Lynn, why does it matter? What difference does it make who the Oakland County Prosecutor is? It matters more now than ever before for these reasons. If you look around the country, you see all these civil unrest, there's racial tensions, there is rioting in our streets, our businesses, our families, our livelihoods are at risk from rioting and from uh, everything that's been going on lately. And we need a prosecutor that will stand up and once these arrests are made, actually prosecute the cases so that we send a clear message, not in Oakland County. This race is more important than ever. So, yes, law and order is a huge issue this year with all that's going on, as you just mentioned. And Oakland County has a reputation for being one of the safest counties. We got some really safe communities like Rochester Hills, Waterford. Uh, I could list many of them very known for being very safe. But what uh, significance does the prosecutor's office actually have in maintaining that kind of uh, serenity in these communities? Um, you didn't mention Oakland Township. I will. And Oakland, to, of course, Oakland Township. I'll get in trouble for those I have not mentioned for safe. Oakland Township just got number three safest, but that's at risk right now. Uh, frankly, law and order has been good. Uh, it's, there's room for improvement. Obviously, that's why I ran. But in the past, it's been good because the prosecutors have prosecuted uh, very strongly at times, uh, other times less strongly, but we have prosecuted the cases that the officers bring to us. Um, there's room for improvement in areas such as domestic violence, et cetera. But largely, law enforcement has made those arrests and the prosecutors have been willing to try the cases and go to bat for our citizens. Um, unfortunately, with the swing in and push for justice reform, there, all of that is at danger. For instance, my opponent wants no cash bonds. No cash bonds, are you kidding me? Somebody commits an armed robbery, a murder, etc. You don't want a cash bond to secure them coming back to court. You don't want to protect the public. A cash bond is only one tool, mind you, to secure a defendant coming back to court. But it's an important tool that the current opponent has said, no, I don't, I'm not going to support those or argue for cash bonds. And she's said that publicly. There are so many reasons to support. This is an important year with all of these reforms. Um, commitments to reduce jail populations 15%. Well, exactly how are you going to do that? You have to look at the offense. And more importantly, you have to look at the victims. We have always, in Oakland County, uh, to varying degrees, but always, always, always backed victims, given them a voice in the courtroom. That's at risk now. The businesses, the livelihoods, all of that is at risk right now. This is the turning point. Either we stay strong and firm and protect Oakland County, or we become the next Portland. I'm kind of curious. Your race is particularly interesting because you had a long-term incumbent in Oakland County, and it appeared a while back that that's who your opponent would be. And she got primaried and taken out by a relative newcomer which has left this as sort of an open seat. And I'm just curious, what happened there? It seemed like a lot of money was spent. A lot of money came in from the outside. What do you know about that money and, and why would people from outside of state want to get involved in Oakland County, Michigan? It's a really multi-layered question, but the bottom line is a substantial out-of-state money did come into this particular race. My opponent, current opponent, spent $420,000 on a primary, 420,000. She made 480, she spent 420. A lot of that was small donations, $25 little piggybacks that kept coming in from out of state, almost every state when I looked at that, the campaign finance records, almost every single state was represented as having contributed to her campaign. And you have to ask why. Well, a lot of people would say, you know, the national level, they're going after prosecutor's offices, there's big push for justice reform, et cetera, et cetera. But the bottom line is that money allowed her to do TV ads to do and, and to basically overwhelm the current in, 
incumbent. Well, she's still on the incumbent for the next few months, but there was no competition in the amount of money that was spent. I think it was 150 some thousand dollars versus, you know, 420,000. So she just absolutely plastered everything. Um, and, and frankly, that outside money concerns me. That's not from our citizens, our residents, our business people saying, we're interested in you. Some of it was, to be fair, but a lot of it was not. And that means you have to look at the big question, why is this race important to somebody outside the state? And it comes down to good old fashioned politics and that right now we are a purple state. They say purple because we're not 100% red and Republican, we're not 100% blue and Democrat. And if you can influence all of these small, uh, and I don't say small because Oakland County is 1.27 million people, but if you can influence all the local politics, it strengthens their push to say, look, Michigan really is Democrat, you know, and vote Biden. So it's all part of the bigger plan to push our county Democrat. You know, I find that very interesting. You say it came from many, many states, all states small donations, it makes it sounds like it was coordinated as part of uh, some sort of an effort. And I'm well, just wondering, is there a way to follow that money and to find out if it was something coordinated and what is behind all that? So. I'm sure there's a way to find it, uh, to locate it. Um, you know, I've heard the rumors through uh, Lansing and some of the uh, channels, if you will, that it's tied, it's a matter of Act Blue and tying races to uh, other races. Uh, I can't say for sure. I haven't looked into it. What I can say is there was a whole lot of donations um, and interesting amounts that most people wouldn't pay attention to. Uh, you know, a small $25 donations, you know, fundraisers, you usually charge a hundred right. or 50. Right. These were small 25, almost like they were uh, piggybacked on, you know, you went into some program, did a hundred dollars, and then it said, will you also contribute to this candidate and gave you the option of 25 bucks. It, it was that pronounced when you look at the campaign finance. I mean, it's strange. I mean, I donate a lot to candidates. I don't donate to people out of state in county prosecutor races. There's just nothing that would catch my uh, interest or attention. So that makes this very suspicious, doesn't it? It, it? it does indeed. And I think it's worth somebody looking at. Unfortunately, I have to focus on this campaign. Right. Exactly. Well, tell me, Lynn Getz, you're a successful lawyer. A, def a defense attorney. What uh, has inspired you to get involved in this race? I've been an attorney in criminal law for 28 and a half years, both as a former assistant prosecutor, former city attorney, and now defense attorney. It gives me a balanced approach. But the reason that I got into this is very personal. My mom is my absolute hero. She is amazing. When I was seven, she was arguing with my father. He got up from the kitchen table and I can still see that kitchen table to this day with the silver band around the edge that they had back, that's dating me a little, but um, they're called retro now, let's just say that. And he got up in the middle of that argument, came into my room, I was seven years old. He picked me up out of bed, woke me up, brought me into the kitchen where they were arguing sat me down on his lap, and then sat a gun down on the table with the barrel sitting there pointed towards my mother in this fashion. Ooh. He then looked at me and said, if you don't walk over and tell her you don't love her, I will kill her. Wow. So I chose criminal law because my mom broke that cycle. She got us out of there. And she's amazing. She broke the cycle of domestic violence for us kids. She gave us another example later in life when she married her true love. And, and that's a great love story too. But she broke the cycle and it inspired me. And I thought if I could get into criminal justice, if I could reach out to victims, if I could reach out to people charged with domestic violence and help in some way to step into that, to give them the tools to break that, cycle to realize it's happening and to break it then i can make a difference and in a way it's a little bit of a tribute to my mom because she inspired me to take action and i became a prosecutor and then you know when uh, i left the prosecutor's office i stepped into defense practice but it's still 
a deep seated inspiration in why I'm running for prosecutor, why I have always stayed with criminal justice and fought in the courtrooms to make a difference. Well, that is very inspiring, and I didn't know you experienced that. And I know that the prosecutor is the victim's attorney, so, and you, you've got a big heart, and I know that you want to make people feel secure and know that if something happens where they need help, that you're going to be there to help them out. So, if uh, I may, um, I applaud you for, uh, for that kind of dedication. If I may, there are a lot of domestic violence victims out there, and I hope they do get the help and break the cycle. Reach out to law enforcement. Law enforcement's been bashed a lot lately. Officers and, and you know, you've even seen lasers pointed at federal officers, et cetera. They are there to protect and serve. They want to help break that cycle, and they need our support. So if you want to label me, I guess I'm your law and order prosecutor because I'm going to be there to back them up and make sure they can reach out and help domestic violence victims. It's so important. I mean, enough with, is enough. Stop bashing on the officers. They're there to help. Stop rioting. It's time we take Oakland County back. Very good. I think that's a, a good conclusion, Lynn Getz. And what I'll do is I'll put up on the screen a way to contact you if people want to get involved and to uh, help support your candidacy. And, uh, and I'm sure that you're gonna be running up against a lot of uh, funding coming in from out of state. So we gotta make sure that we keep this uh, at home at Oakland County and not an influence from somewhere else. Thank you, it is our county and it's a beautiful county at that. Very good, Lynn Getz, thank you so much for joining Newark Discussions. Thank you.